Hey guys, welcome back to another tier list. It's been a while, but I return to you today with the single most iconic tier list that the internet will ever see. I present to you the Flood tier list. So today we are ranking every single flood form that has ever existed by its threat level. And as you can see here, we have five levels of threat. We have the small potato tier, the beatable tier, the small chance of survival tier, the end of the world as we know it tier, and the it's so over tier. Uh, also, make sure you stick around to the end because there's something at the end of this video that's I will say quite special that you're not going to want to miss. But without any further ado, let's rank these iconic, delicious food forms. Delicious? Yeah, delicious. So starting out, we have the Abomination, the evolved version of the Juggernaut that we saw in Halo Wars 2 that is basically the key mine form that exists prior to a proto grave mind. Now, I'm going to be... This is a tough one. I'm going to say for the Abomination, a small chance of survival. These things are very tough, they're very big, and they lead large armies of Flood. However, they are definitely killable with enough force, and the Flood haven't spread enough at this point to have like any kind of robust intelligence outside of the Abomination. So I think if you bring down an Abomination, all the local Flood become feral again. They basically go back to the feral stage. Well, they're in the feral stage, but they, they remain in the feral stage. They keep the traits of the feral stage. They aren't intelligent anymore. They aren't coordinated. So I think if you kill the Abomination early enough, then you can definitely stamp out a threat. However, killing it is not easy, so I think you could survive it. You just need to hit it with enough firepower and you'd need to do so quickly before it can help form a real proto grave mind. The Blight Stalker. Now, this one is going to go in End of the World as we know it. And the reason for that is because if a Blight Stalker exists, so too does a Blight Land. And by extension, a grave mind probably, ex well, no, a grave mind definitely does exist because the Blight Stalker is a pure form. And for pure forms to exist, the flood need to be in the coordinate stage of evolution. And for that to happen, you guessed it, a grave mind has to exist. If you single handedly encounter a Blight Stalker in a Blight Land, you're dead, like flat out. You want, I, don't, I don't think you're ever really going to kill this thing. Maybe like the prototype suit from Halo Legends would be enough to counter it. But based on at least what little we know about the Blight Stalker, those things aren't designed for people to win encounters against. They're not designed for people to suddenly survive an encounter with. If you're in a Blightland and you meet a Blight Stalker, you're done for. Ooh, the Bomber. Now, these guys are an interesting kind of carrier form. They're not actually a pure form. These are the guys in Halo Wars 1 that drop the sacks of infection forms. I think with these, they're going to go in beatable. I love these things. I think the faces look horrifying. Really cool designs. But... They're quite slow, quite cumbersome, quite large, so easy to spot. If you, you're not suddenly going to have one pop out of nowhere and drop a load of infection forms on you, you're going to see it coming. It's basically a flood hot air balloon. Um, they are definitely lethal and they can spread the infection quite fast, but there are much better and much more lethal ways of the flood infection spreading that go beyond the bomber form. As much as I genuinely love these guys, I, they're beatable. They're definitely beatable. If you encounter these things, you can definitely counter them. And you know what? I'd say the same is going to go for the carrier form as well. Same kind of tier. Again, carrier forms are very slow, very cumbersome. They're lethal if they burst, but as we know, all it takes is an explosion or fire to basically neutralize them entirely. So if a force was prepared, they'd be able to put down a carrier form pretty easy without it having any major repercussions, I'd say. Now, combat forms. This is where it gets interesting. So I've lumped all the regular combat forms, so like grunts, jackals, humans, elites, brutes, etc., all together into one tier. It depends what stage of evolution the Flood is in for us to rank these, because if they're in the feral stage, I'd say, yeah, they're beatable. We can beat them. But if the Flood are in the coordinated or, God forbid, the galactic or transgalactic stage, then I'm not going to lie... They're going to go in the it's so over category. Let me explain. So the, the combat forms as they are, are pretty lethal. They retain the knowledge and the, the wisdom and the, and the information of their hosts. So not only can they operate weapons and vehicles, but they can also operate machinery and systems and networks if their hosts had that intelligence or if the hive mind that they're connected to has that intelligence as well. But 
there's also the fact that they can spread the infection in two ways. So they can either incubate infection forms on their back and basically act as faster, more mobile carrier forms. They can literally bite people and spread the infection like a regular conventional zombie, which I always mention this, but I, I love the fact that the flood can actually bite like a zombie. I really like that, makes them feel a bit more grounded. But the worst part of them is that if the flood reached like the, the galactic or transgalactic stage, or hell, even the coordinate stage revolution, the grave mind can use them to transmit the logic plague remotely. That means that a combat form can be in the vicinity of any AI, any computer system, any computer network, anything digital, or hell, even anything biological, because biologicals, as we learned the other day in my last, or video before last, biologicals are equally as susceptible to the logic plague as digital things are. So combat forms, they can infect AIs, they can infect computer networks, they can infect people, they can infect anything. So honestly, the presence of a combat form, its threat level varies based on the stage of evolution that the Flood are in, but I'm going to honestly put them in the it's or over category because if they can transmit the logic plague, that alone means that like, I mean, all it takes is one horde of combat forms to go through a city and the entire populace of that city, if they aren't infected, have gone insane. They've just completely lost it and all their AIs, all their networks are compromised as well. It's game over at that point. It's so over. If you're enjoying this tier list, make sure you go and subscribe and also follow me on Twitter at Hidden Xperia because if you don't, I'm going to put the Grave Mind in small potatoes. Do you want to see me rank the Grave Mind as a small potato? No? Okay, well, subscribe and follow. You know what to do. Okay, the Flood Bursters from Halo Wars 2. These are basically the subterranean carrier formers, basically, but they're a lot bigger than a regular carrier form. These guys, I'm going to put in end of the world as we know it, because unless a, a country or a planet is actively using seismic scanners to, to detect things under the ground, you're not going to have any idea these things are coming. You might feel a bit of a rumble under the ground, but... Before you know it, if you don't feel that, you're going to have a ton of infection forms bursting out right beneath you and you had no idea. These things are low-key one of the most lethal forms of Flood and I would say one of the only carrier forms, so to speak, that is actually genuinely hard to circumvent. Without seismic scanning, you're not going to have a clue these things are coming. Before you know it, they're going to be infecting an entire city all from the ground. The Flood Supercell. Now, this is a bit weird because... This kind of applies to everything. This is the absolute genesis, the, the root cause of the flood is the flood supercell. So theoretically, you could put it in small potatoes. You could put it in the it's so over category. I'm going to say, I'm going to be fair here and I'm going to treat it as a single entity. So imagine there was just like a single flood supercell on my table right now. You guys can't see it, right? But there's a flood supercell here. So what would happen if that was there? Well, if it made contact with my skin, I'm infected. Flat out, it doesn't even have to get in my airways or in my, like, go down my throat or be ingested into my bloodstream. Mere contact with it is enough. So I would say this thing, because it's so small, is so extremely lethal. I'm going to say end of the world as we know it for this, I think. I think that's fair because it's responsible for everything that we know about the flood and all the forms that exist, but it's not solely responsible. Even though it's the root cause of all of it, the forms themselves are responsible for most of the damage that they do. Like, for example, a grave mind is responsible for all the stuff that a grave mind does. Like, yes, a flood supercell helped create it and is the reason that it exists, but it's not the main cause of all the damage that it does, if that makes any sense. So I think end of the world as we know it is a fair tier for that. Okay, so next up we have the Flood Gaunt Pure Form, which is the one that we've only ever seen in that one Awaken the Nightmare cutscene in Halo Wars 2. These are a very lethal kind of pure form that basically act as assassins, but also command other Flood units as well, if I remember rightly. These guys are extremely tough and also extremely lethal thanks to their, again, assassin-like tendencies. They also have really, really strong whips that can pin down, like, even the strongest of brutes. So I'm going to say these guys are beatable, but you'd have to be in a very specific situation, geared in a very specific way to beat them. So I'm going to say small chance of survival, lower down, of course, than the Abomination, because the Abomination is one step away from a proto grave mind. But they would be very, very, very hard to counter. We see how agile they are in that cutscene. You aren't just going to be able to, like, strafe that thing with a BR. Like, 
That's going to take a large squad to take down. Hell, that's going to take Spartans to take down. Okay, next up we have a Grave Mind. I mean, this one is pretty obvious. If a Grave Mind exists, chances are it's so over. Like, the Grave Mind is, for all intents and purposes, the be all end all. Obviously, things exist beyond the Grave Mind, but chances are if a Grave Mind exists, you're screwed. That said, the only two instances of a Grave Mind ever existing. The Flood have lost both times, so maybe not, but realistically, the existence of a Grave Mind means that entire ecosystems have been consumed by the Flood, literally thousands of tons of biomass has been consumed and recycled into its body, it can coordinate large amounts of Flood forms on the ground, in vehicles, in ships in the air, I mean, it, it can use slip space, it can infect entire planets at some point, more on that in a minute. The existence of a Grave Mind is basically the four horns of the apocalypse. Is it the four horns? Seven horns. There's something in the Bible about horns and the apocalypse. I remember that. And it's basically, <laughs> it's the flood equivalent of that. If a grave mine exists, chances are you are screwed. There's no getting around that. Even a direct assault on a grave mine is going to be so hard because of how populated and dangerous a blight land is. The entire thing is filled with spores. It's patrolled by blight stalkers. There's going to be tons of defenses in there like stalks and flood dens. It's just, it's so difficult. And there's the logic plague as well, like I said earlier, the fact that it can infect not only like sentience and biologicals, but AIs, computer systems, networks, the, the AIs on ships to control entire fleets. When we look at a grave mind, it's better to look at what a grave mind can't do than what a grave mind can do. And that list is very, very small. So if a grave mind exists, uh, chances are it's so over. Oh, now this is going to be an interesting one. The Helion. I honestly think if this thing exists, ah, oh, this is tough. I'm going to say small chance of survival, but right at the top. So the Helion, if you don't know, is a siege flood pure form. It can twist and contort itself to basically alter its body to counter even the strongest defenses of an enemy. And the main point of this thing is to siege enemy bases, enemy encampments, enemy defenses. If an enemy has a base or any kind of defense or perimeter of any kind, this thing is designed to counter it. I know it can, it can incubate and create tons of like infection forms and I assume other pure forms as well because it's meant to be pretty damn big. I think you could beat this thing with a lot of probably max strikes. I reckon max would max would probably take down a, a Helion, but based on how big they're supposed to be, infantry and even vehicles, I think would have a really tough time with it, especially when you consider that it's not going to arrive at base assault on its own. It's going to arrive at an enemy base with tons of other infection forms and combat forms and pure forms and God knows what else. So I think you could, there is a very small chance that you could destroy and overcome a Helion, but if the flood have got to the point where they can create one and one arrives at your doorstep you have a very very small chance of survival hmm an infection form interesting interesting i actually don't know one single infection form is enough to bring down an entire species we know that shipmaster half jaw told us that but at the same time one infection form they are a lot bigger than people think they are because obviously the sense of scale in the halo games is dwarfed quite a lot by the fact that you're playing as like a deep seven foot <laughs> super soldier um but they're quite big and they're quite tough i'm gonna say beatable oh yeah i'm gonna put them at the bottom of beatable obviously they pose a massive massive risk and if an enemy is unprepared then well Kiss goodbye to your entire planet if one of these bad boys gets a hold of your spinal cord. But uh, I think looking at them individually, they're definitely beatable, even by like regular people. I mean, they're not as fast as say the face huggers from Alien. Like you can definitely get around them. They jump quite slowly. They run fast, but I feel like you could dodge them. Maybe I'm overestimating myself here, but I feel like if an infection form was coming at me, I could probably smack it and like burst it. Like within the force, I reckon you could do so. I'm going to say beatable, obviously, if we're talking about large hordes of them. I mean, if we're looking at a horde of infection forms, they're definitely going in end of the world as we know it. But individually, they're beatable. Trust me. I know that from experience. Ah, another Halo Wars 2 pure form, the Infestor form. This thing, again, I'm going to put in small chance of survival. Beneath the Abomination, 
Above the Gaunt, though, I think they're harder to defeat than the Gaunt. So these things are designed as anti-vehicle pure forms. The whole thing is that they're meant to latch themselves onto vehicles, send their, like, tentacles inside the vehicle, infect the crew, and then cover the vehicle in biomass and give it to the Flood, basically. And, I mean, these things are fast from what I remember, quite tough and very agile. I mean, if you're in a Scorpion and one of these guys starts barreling towards you and you miss your shot with a cannon... You're screwed. Like, this thing is going to latch onto you. It's going to infect your vehicle and it's going to infect you. And then it's going to take your scorpion and it's going to turn it on your friends. So, I think this thing, again, there is a small chance of survival. You could definitely destroy this thing. You could definitely beat it. But because of how fast and agile it is and how lethal it is, like, the, the thought process of being able to just instantly, like that, convert an entire, like, scorpion or wreath or warthog or anything like that is quite terrifying and poses an extreme threat. Ah, my baby, the Flood Juggernaut, the Flood Juggernaut. This bad boy is again going to go into a small chance of survival. I would love to rank it higher because I love the Juggernaut so much. Anything that's like Halo 2 or cut Halo 2 content, I have a real soft spot in my heart for. But realistically, the Juggernaut is beatable. So the Juggernaut is basically controlled, at least from what I can gather, by the infection forms that are inside local combat forms. So a load of, like, the infection forms commanding combat forms come together to control the Juggernaut, almost as another version of a combat form, to act as their, like, local leader, but it's not a leader that commands them, rather they command it and it also helps to kind of organize like hordes of combat forms in one area with hordes of combat forms in another area so it's almost like a key mind form before a key mind form actually exists it's the precursor to the abomination basically now this thing intelligence wise is really lethal like being able to organize and command squads of combat forms like in whole different areas far apart from each other is obviously really lethal when it comes to strategy and planning but physically is where this thing shines i think i mean the juggernaut is huge extremely strong and at the same time extremely agile i mean those tentacles it can use to like literally scale walls and whilst also knocking other things away hitting things like with immense power I would assume, given the fact that it can drag itself up walls with just two of them, this thing can kind of do it all. Maybe I'd say the Juggernaut is like a jack of all trades, master of none. It's like an abo it is literally an abomination, but not quite as advanced yet. But the Juggernaut, I think, would be very tough to beat because of its strength. However, at the same time, theoretically, if you killed all the combat forms in its area that had the infection forms in them that were commanding the juggernaut surely then the juggernaut would just fall down so instead of severing the head to like cause the army to discombobulate you sever the army's head to discombobulate the juggernaut hopefully that makes some kind of sense but the juggernaut is definitely beatable as much as i love it as much as i wish i could say that it's in the it's so over category the juggernaut is definitely a beatable combat form technically it's just going to take a lot of firepower to bring it down. Oh god, okay, so the old definition of a key mind, which now is just a planet-sized grave mind. I mean, if a grave mind has grown big enough to consume an entire planet, it, it was already so over when the grave mind came into existence, it's now even more over. I regret to inform that it has never been more over than it currently is. This thing is like the mark of death the entire galaxy to be honest with you i mean the fact that it's managed to consume an entire planet means that the flood are now in the galactic stage they can use slip space to traverse across the galaxy spread to other colonies spread to other planets spread to other species do i need to put into words how over it would be if that happened it would be so over. This thing is almost like the textbook definition of it's so over. Oh, okay. No, it's even more over if you happen to have a primordial. I mean, the primordial was a single entity, not a kind of entity, but I mean, the primordial was the first grave mind and the last precursor. I mean, the thing converted a Metarch class AI, mendicant bias, to the flood. That alone is horrifying enough. I mean, again, I don't think I need to go into much detail as to why the last precursor that was also on the side of the flood poses such a threat to be at the top of the it's so over category. But man, I mean, this thing is a whole reason that the foreigners fell, that that entire era of the galaxy was consumed by the flood so much that they had to fire the entire halo array. This thing is almost single-handedly responsible for the entire resetting of the galaxy and indirectly for us existing as we are now. So 
I guess in a way we can thank the primordial, but at the same time, we should definitely not get anywhere near it because if we do, it's going to start talking to us and then it's going to infect us. Trust me, you don't want to do that. A proto grave mine. Now, this is the Halo 1 proto grave mine, but as we saw in Halo Wars 1 and Halo Wars 2, the proto grave mine can get a lot bigger than this. I'm going to say end of the world as we know it right at the top because proto grave mines are still combatable. They're still counterable. The flood are still in the feral stage, so they're not particularly coordinated when these things exist. So you do stand a decent chance at stamping them out. However, the problem comes from if you kind of leave it to fester, obviously then it's going to turn into a grave mind. You know what, with that said, yeah, end of the world as we know it, I'm going to leave it there actually, because if you leave it to fester, or worse, if you can't find it, then yeah, the world is screwed. But if you manage to find it, then you can definitely stamp it out, but you're going to have to be quick. The Ranger form. The Ranger is going to go in beatable, I'd say. The Ranger pure form is highly lethal. I mean, those calcium shards that it fires at you look pretty damn sharp, to put it lightly. And it has extreme range, extreme fire rate as well. I mean, bro, it pops those things out so fast, like a, like a minigun. But at the same time, if you get near one of these things, even if it like coils up into the brace position like it likes to, you can still just beat it to death or stick it with a grenade or even like burn it or something like that. They are absolutely beatable. They're lethal, as with everything in the beatable category, but they're beatable. They're absolutely beatable. In fact, I'd say they're the most beatable of all of the pure forms in Halo 3. The Cedar. Now, this thing is basically an airborne infection form. However, I'm going to put it right at the bottom of a small chance of survival. And the reason for that is because, unlike the infection forms on the ground that aren't that fast typically, these things are fast and very nimble. They're small, they're thin, and they're very, very fast. Like, they're intended to infect aircraft and airships, which, I mean, that alone is quite terrifying. But even as, like, a standalone entity, when you take that away, they're still going to be really hard to kill, even with anti-air weaponry, because of how fast they move. Spartan combat forms. These things are going in end of the world as we know it, in between the Blight Stalker and the Proto Grave Mind. We know that these things are counterable. We can kill them. But again, that requires you to have many nukes on hand. And that's not always the case, right? If one of these things is left unnuked after being infected, it is absolutely game over. I mean, the Flood then gain all of the knowledge of the Spartan program, all the ways to counter Mjolnir armor, all the problems with it, all the faults that obviously most people don't know, but technicians or Spartans that are wearing it will absolutely know all the downsides and all the faults of it. The Flood will know that and they'll know how to counter any other Spartan. That and also, I mean, a combat form running around in like one ton billion dollar power armor that was meant to counter entire hordes of insurrectionists and later aliens is pretty bad. It's going to retain the strength and all the augmentations of the Spartans as well. The strength, the agility, the endurance, the intelligence as well. I mean, obviously that gets assimilated into the hive mind, but the sheer intelligence of a Spartan, a, a combat form having that level of intelligence is terrifying. These things, if they aren't nuked, honestly, if you don't nuke a Spartan combat form, this thing goes into it's so over, but the mere fact that a nuke can stop it means that it's going to go in end of the world as we know it. But man, I would honestly say that those things are as, you know what, I'm going to bump it up. It's more lethal than a proto grave mind. I genuinely think that if left alone and unnuked, a Spartan combat form is going to do more damage than a proto grave mind. Okay then, the aptly named spawner form. So these things aren't meant to be combat forms. Rather, they're a kind of pure form that exist purely, pun intended, to spawn infection forms. But they're a lot stronger than a carrier form or a bomber form or any other kind of infection form incubating form. How many times can I say form in 30 seconds? <laughs> these things, I would say, go, yeah, probably like top of the carrier form section, but definitely in beatable. It can run away, but... It doesn't really have many defenses besides the infection forms that it spews out. So, I mean, you send some hornets over or some hawks, that thing's dead quite easily. Okay, then the Flood Spore. This bad boy, I think, is going to go into a small chance of survival. Quite high up. I would say, yeah, about towards the top end. Not worse than an Abomination or a Helion, but not great. So, 
It really depends on the environment and the people in the environment that a flood spore is kind of dissipated into. So if it's a civilian environment where nobody really knows anything about the flood, nobody is really geared up with uh, NBC gear or anything like that, then like, yeah, it's so over at that point. However, if a force has like even the slightest little bit of knowledge about the flood and they know to wear NBC gear in an environment where there are spores, spores can't do anything. They have to either make direct contact with the skin or be inhaled to infect a person. And if someone's wearing NBC gear, they are literally rendered useless. As long as that person, when they come out of a contamination zone, is decontaminated effectively. So there are no spores like resting on their gear or on their, like, I don't know, anywhere on their gear. Then, like, if that's done, the spore is rendered completely useless. But then again, the reason that it's in a small chance of survival is because if these bad boys are dissipated into a civilian area, game over. Like, absolutely game over. You're gonna infect an entire city in, like, ten minutes. Like, that easy. The Stalker form. The Stalker form, I think, is gonna go at the top of beatable. These guys are fast and very agile and very nimble, but they don't really do that much damage. They aren't really meant to attack. More so, they're meant to reposition so they can con convert themselves into either a range form or a tank form. Uh, they are definitely beatable. The only reason that I've put them higher than the range form is because these guys are some, they're slippery buggers. They're slippery buggers. Even a Spartan struggles to catch them, right? These guys are gonna get out of your grasp. They're gonna dodge your bullets. They're gonna dodge explosions quite easily. They're not gonna pose much of a threat, at least, on their own when they transform they're going to but on their own they're not going to pose much of a threat but i don't know they're beatable but they're definitely less beatable than a range form because i mean you get close to a range form it's dead you can't get close to a stalker form that thing is going to sprint away climb up walls it's going to jump over you like that thing is going to be hard very hard oh the flood swarms from halo wars one now this is a good one i think that these bad boys are going to go a small chance of survival if you encounter these things. Now, the reason for that is, yes, they're rather weak and they're just regular combat forms, but they're so nimble and agile and hard to hit. They're also really good at destroying aircraft as well, whilst, again, not to sound like a broken record, but remaining nimble and agile. They're thin, they're very small targets, and they're also, like, lethal against infantry as well. Those, again, like the range form, the calcium spikes that they spit out are pretty pretty lethal they look again in halo wars one they look pretty large i assume also because they're a combat form if they bite like it looks like they can do they have pretty violent looking mouths then that bite will spread the infection and i mean all it will take is for one of these guys to swoop down real fast bite somebody and swoop back up and that person is infected it's like 28 days later all over again that guy is infected and it's game over so i think if a large number of birds on a planet that, that's another thing as well birds on at least earth are obviously very abundant and these things are just infected birds so if this is any indication of what the average flood infected bird is going to be like with the amount of them that there are on earth and i'd assume most of the planets in the halo universe as well it's going to be really really hard to combat them the entire sky is going to be filled with infection vectors so these guys i think if you encounter them you can beat them but you've got a pretty small chance of survival oh the poor flood tadpole unfortunately this is going to be the only small potato uh on the, today's list i don't really know what these things are meant to be i'm not sure if they're meant to be like waterborne infection forms with the idea that they infect water supplies because if that were the case they'd be like top tier it's so over but based on what little lore we have, it seems like they're just like early infection forms, basically. Like they're just like a precursor to an infection form that don't really do much. We've literally only ever seen them once in Halo 2, and that was it. Uh, again, like I said, if they were waterborne infection forms that polluted water supplies, that, dude, if an ocean was filled with these things, game over. But we don't know that, so I can't rank them in the it's so over category gotta be fair unfortunately the tadpole is as much as it saddens me to see this a small potato ah the tank pure form my favorite of halo 3's pure forms this bad boy is i would say above the swarm and below the abomination in a small chance of survival these things are very tough as the name implies very hard to kill extremely strong granted very slow very very cumbersome but really really hard to kill that big like barbed muscle arm thing 
does immense damage to not only like infantry but i would assume vehicles as well given how strong it is and also another thing that people don't realize about the tanks is that they can also spawn infection forms much like the spawn form mobile on the field so like all of a sudden one of these bad boys can just go like and just like vomit out a bunch of infection forms and you've got more potential infection vectors on the field these guys would be really, really hard to take down without a coordinated strike force. Even Spartan the struggles to take them down. I mean, that alone is a sign of how lethal they are. You could beat them, but if these things, again, start stomping through like a civilian city, absolutely game over. Even like, I think Marines would struggle to take down one of these bad boys unless they really coordinated their fire with grenades and rockets and grenade launchers as well. So very situational to take one of these bad boys down i think in most circumstances you're kind of screwed if you see one of these and finally we have a rather weird halo wars one combat form the thrasher now this thing is basically an infected gorilla at least that's what it looks like even the face looks a little bit gorilla like which is terrifying i mean gorillas the ones that we have on earth are like some of the strongest things that this entire planet has ever created. Those things would annihilate almost any, no, any human easily. Like, bro, a gorilla's strength is unreal. And if that's what these are, or if they're like a derivative of that, then they are going to be, honestly, stronger than a tank form, I'd say. I'm going to rank these guys in a small chance of survival higher than the tank form, right? So I think they definitely lose to the tank in terms of not being able to vomit the infection forms, but at the same time, their strength and their also their ability to bite, which of course spreads the infection, is pretty damn lethal. These guys in Halo Wars 1 were extremely tough, extremely fast as well for their size. The tank is slow for its size. This thing, really fast. It runs at you on all fours and bashes into you. I think these things would cause absolute havoc again, unless a force knew specifically how to counter them, which most wouldn't because they've only ever been encountered on, what's the planet called? Etrin Harbridge, I think it was called, right? Like, no one knows how to counter these things. It would not be common knowledge. So I think that they would go pretty high up in a small chance of survival. If one of these things was running through a civilian city, even like a military FOB, game over. And so there you have it, my ranking of every single flood form by the threat that it poses. But like I said at the start of the video, there's something big that I gotta show you, something, something exciting at the end of this video. So allow me to show you. It's time to rank the flood forms by their cuteness. There you have it. Merry Christmas, my friends. So the link to go and do your own version of the flood threat tier list and of course, the Flood Cuteness tier list as well can be found in the description. Make sure you go and do them and also tweet me your results as well, how you rank all the Flood forms at Hidden Xperia on Twitter. You know it by now. Go and follow me and also tweet me your tier list. I'd love to see it. So with that said, I'm going to round this video out. Fellas, Merry Christmas. Thank you for everything this year. It's been a really good year. I've done some stuff this year that like has expanded outside of my regular realm of content and I've loved it so much. So I can't thank you all enough for the support this year. Uh, I really hope you all have a good Christmas. Genuinely, I love you all. Uh, I really want to thank, of course, all of my patrons for the continued support over there. Thank you all so much as well. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good Christmas.